Well, new this morning, we're learning much more about a SWAT standoff in northwest Albuquerque. Police say they were called to a home near Candelaria and 2nd Street Friday afternoon after someone reported a man jumping into a neighbor's backyard. Now, police say that man and his neighbor got into some type of scuffle and he cut the homeowner with a piece of glass. They say then the man ran back to his house. Officers tried to get him to come out, but he refused. After a SWAT standoff, police arrested the suspect. While doing that, they say he bit an officer's finger. That officer was treated for his wounds. The neighbor is okay. No names have been released. Well, the man who killed someone at Los Altos Skate Park is not facing charges because of cell phone video screenshots. Now, Albuquerque police say a fist fight, then a gunfight broke out over a stolen skateboard. The video shows Jaquise Lewis was shooting at others before he was killed. We've all come to the conclusion that at this point, Jaquise Lewis was shot in self-defense. Could those circumstances change? Possibly. But we need information to make those circumstances change. Police say they have talked to the man who killed Lewis, but they're still looking for the remaining two shooters. In all, four people fired shots. Seven people were wounded. And a skate park shooting that happened last Sunday remains unsolved. To get more leads, Crime Stompers has it as their crime of the week. 16-year-old Brendan Palmer and his friends were leaving the park when a teen gang member came up to them. Later, someone in a blue SUV followed them and opened fire, shooting Palmer in the ear. We have newly released body camera video right after the hit and run crash that John Bones Jones is accused of causing. And then they said that they've seen him run and jump over the wall, okay? and we haven't seen him since. The former MMA champ is accused of running a red light, crashing into a pregnant woman's car, and then running from the scene. It happened last month near Southern and Wantabo. While searching his car, police found pot, a pipe, and documents with his name. True honor. Dude, I wonder if this is that fighter's car. John Jones? I wouldn't doubt it, bro. He said he was real tall. Jones eventually turned himself in. He's charged with a felony, accused of leaving the scene of an accident involving injury. The UFC has stripped Jones of his title and suspended him indefinitely. A Roswell mother and her two children found themselves in a terrifying situation. It happened south of town near the base Monday night. She and her three and five year old were walking along a sidewalk when they heard a car accelerate. The car continued toward them, actually came onto the sidewalk a little bit, and uh, just missed striking them in, in what appeared to them, what appeared to the, to the mom to be an intentional uh, act. The woman described the car as a red two-door sedan, possibly a Honda, with a really loud muffler. Now, she couldn't identify the driver, but believes there were two men in the car. If you have any information, call Roswell Police. The attorneys for two teens accused of beating two homeless men to death are trying to convince a judge to treat them as juveniles because they didn't completely understand their actions. Nathaniel Carrillo and Gilbert Tafoya, 16 and 15 at the time, are accused of beating the sleeping men with cinder blocks and poles. Yesterday, their attorneys argued some young people can't control their impulses, but prosecutors were quick to challenge them. Now, if the judge decides to charge Carrillo and Tafoya as juveniles, they could be locked up until they're 21. As adults, they could get life in prison. Well, the man who murdered his ex-girlfriend and her nephew nearly three years ago has unexpectedly pleaded no contest to charges. Brian Pulliam shot 36-year-old Kristen Landau and 20-year-old Dylan Searfoss in her northeast Albuquerque home in August 2012, a day after she broke up with them. Now, Pulliam and Lando had been dating on and off for months and had a history of domestic violence. Pulliam, an admitted member of the Aryan Brotherhood, has a violent past that includes randomly beating a man and stomping on his head, nearly killing him back in 1996. Now, sentencing for the double murder is scheduled for next week. 
Remains found at a campsite near Santa Fe could be those of Lawrence Longwell. The 29-year-old went missing in December. His car was later found in the parking lot of a trailhead, but there was no sign of Longwell and the search was called off. Now a hiker has discovered remains along with keys which were confirmed to belong to Longwell's car. DNA and dental records will be used to make a positive ID. Well, there's a new wave of concern about ISIS. The FBI is now warning there could be future attacks. Despite no specific threat, the Pentagon has raised the threat level at all of its military installations. The extra precautions follow recent comments made by the FBI stating ISIS is attempting to recruit potential terrorists across the country. Now, this comes at the heels of the recent attack in Garland, Texas, where ISIS later claimed responsibility. The U.S. Attorney General says it is one of the most challenging issues of our time. She says relations are worsening between some city police departments across America and the communities they serve. The Justice Department announced it will carry out a wide-ranging investigation into the practices of Baltimore police officers. The AG says the death of Freddie Gray and the rioting that followed exposed a serious erosion of public trust. Well, custom workers in Spain were shocked to find an eight-year-old boy packed in a suitcase. Workers scanned the luggage and spotted a human silhouette on the screen. The boy, named Abu, was reportedly smuggled into the country from the Ivory Coast. The child is said to be in perfect health and is now in the custody of social services. Apparently, the child's father showed up about an hour after the discovery looking for the boy. The young woman who had the boy in the suitcase is in custody. No word if the boy's father will face charges, too. Well, this is video of the aftermath of a plane crash in Atlanta. A small passenger airplane was taking four people to the University of Mississippi yesterday when it dropped from the sky. It grazed the top of a tractor trailer before smashing into the Atlanta interstate. All four people were killed. It's not known what caused the crash. Well, new this morning, one person is recovering and another is in custody after a stabbing at a bar in northwest Albuquerque. Police say the stabbing happened at the Dirty Bourbon on Eubank in Montgomery. They say employees called police after midnight about a fight that resulted in one man getting stabbed about 10 times. Now, they say the victim was taken to UNMH and his injuries appear to be non-life threatening. They arrested Jared Bowen shortly after he is now facing charges. Well, the state public defender's office says between now and June 30th, defendants out of custody and eligible for a public defender won't get one. It says it's their only option because of a budget deficit. The legislature approved $1.3 million in special funding to close the gap, but it didn't go through after the governor line item vetoed it. A defense attorney, Osama Rashid, says if the state can't provide public defenders, criminal cases are likely to get dismissed. If people want the justice system to work, this is like taking one wheel off a car. It's not going to go. The governor's office says she line vetoed the measure because the public defender's office has been irresponsible with its money. The public defender's office says it applied for a loan from the state board of finance, but doesn't know if it will get approved. An Albuquerque teacher is under police investigation, but the school isn't saying much and parents want answers. Parents with students at the Public Academy for Performing Arts received a letter Friday. It says a teacher is suspected of engaging in an inappropriate relationship with a student, and the teacher is on administrative leave. Albuquerque police are investigating. They told us the student involved is underage, but APD and the school have not identified the teacher. I think that that's the right thing to do so that we'll, all parents can be aware. It's pretty serious if they've already, if there's allegations like that. No one from the school would comment. Police say no students are in danger at school. So far, no one has been charged. Senior pranks at Los Lunas High got a little crazy, even sending a school security guard to the hospital. Police say yesterday a group of seniors entered the new part of the school that's still under construction and set off a fire extinguisher. They say a security guard followed them and had a reaction to the chemicals. Some seniors we spoke to say things just got out of hand. We're not bad kids. Like I said, we're just trying to have fun, live up our last day of high school. 
The prank came just one day after two students were suspended for riding their horses to school. The district says some students were held accountable for their actions but wouldn't elaborate. A South Valley boy had a birthday he'll never forget after he was almost run over. Well, it's my birthday and I felt like I was going to die. Well, Austin Brown got off the school bus Thursday afternoon, excited to go home and celebrate his 13th birthday. But a driver trying to run from BCSO nearly ran him over. A guy came out of nowhere and flung around the corner and nearly hit me. Oh, Austin is okay. Police arrested Carlos Gomez in the chase. Inside his car, they found a meth pipe, a stolen gun, and numerous forged IDs. What's becoming more and more common, home security cameras catching some bad guy in the act. Now police departments around the country are asking people to register their cameras so cops know where to go to look for video. News 13's Haley Rush reports. It's extra security for homeowners and police departments too. Home security cameras obviously are that watchful eye when you're not there. For Rio Rancho police, home security cameras have helped them identify plenty of suspects. Which is why they're asking people with camera systems to register here on CrimeReports.com. It's a great service and it allows you to be a great member of your community and help your neighbors because indeed you may have captured something on video. The website lets police know where any registered camera is. Then if a crime is committed in a neighborhood, police can check an interactive map to know where they might find footage. Melvin Strong has five cameras set up at his Albuquerque home. He actually helped APD catch a thief at his place back in January. What we're seeing is we're seeing um, citizen cameras being used to, to solve Crimes. He says he would love to see APD partner with the site like Rio Rancho has. If something goes down in your neighborhood, they will know to contact you and see if you have any useful footage. And it's not just strong. Other Albuquerque residents say they're also fans of the site. It's great. The police are shorthanded. They need all the eyes on the street they can get. We brought the site to APD's attention. While they wouldn't say if they would use it or not, they did say home security cameras are a huge help. Haley Rush, KRQE News 13. Police departments that use the site have no access to the cameras. They can just see where they are and ask to see the footage. Now, Albuquerque police do have a network of cameras around the city that, can, that they can tap into. They have four mobile cameras they can watch live from their command center. Police can also watch feeds from 100 different traffic cams and privately owned cameras at 300 businesses around town. A Bernalillo County deputy nearly killed in the line of duty will play a special role in honoring fallen officers. In 2013, a man while in a cross city shooting spree shot Robin Hopkins. She was left with a shattered leg in a long road to recovery. Next week, Hopkins will take part in the National Peace Officers Memorial Service in Washington, D.C. Hopkins will place a flower on the memorial wreath for fallen law enforcement officers.